Hi there, welcome to episode 07, Particle Fluid Surface. To render the simulation data, it needs to be imported from the dynamic context to the geometry context. Here, this data can be saved to disk and then converted into a geometry surface. The geometry surface can also be saved to disk to speed up the render process. To start, we need a geometry container at the object level. So, go to the object level, press Tab, type Geo and press Enter twice. Rename the node as Splash Mesh. To dive inside, double click on the node or press the I key. To import the simulation result from the dynamic context, we need a DOP.io node. This node can also cache the data to disk. Press Tab, type DOP.io and press Enter twice. Rename the node as Raw Particles. In the geometry file, you specify where the data is saved and loaded. Let's modify the path. Here, $OS represents the name of the node. If you middle click on the parameter name, you can see the final file name and path. In the Imports from DOPS, in the DOP network parameter, you search for the DOP network to import from. In this case, select Splash Sim. In the DOP node, you need to search for the flip object in the DOP network. In the presets, select Flip Fluid. Now we have our particles. You can see this preset defines three fields to be imported geometry, surface, and well. In the Save to File tab, you can specify if you want to save a frame or a frame range. If you want to save this space, you don't use the .io node to cache your simulation data. Instead, you first use a fluid compress node to compress the data and then use a file cache node to write the compressed data. Click on the output port of the top IO node. Drag, press tab, type fluid comp and press enter. Change the display flag. You can see the points are now represented as low resolution voxels. The value of the particle separation parameter should be the same as the particle separation of the flip object node. Now click on the output port of the fluid compressed node. Drag, press tab, type file cache and press enter. In the file cache node, you can specify where to write the compressed data. So, this is an option for saving space, although in this project we are not going to use it. Before increasing the resolution, Let's save the simulation with the current settings. Select the .io node. Right click on the Start and Ink and select Delete Channels. Now, if you remember, we use our first frames as a pre-roll, so we only need to save, let's say, from frame 40. Finally, press on the Save to Disk button to start the simulation and writing processes. It's ready. The simulation took about 5 minutes. Now, check the load from disk checkbox. We have an error because we only wrote to disk from frame 40 to 120 and at the moment the playhead is located at frame 1. If you go to any frame between 40 and 120, we have no error. To avoid this error in the initial frames, when we have no data, we can use a time blend node. Click on the output port of the top IO node, drag, press tab, type time blend and press enter. 
Here we specify our input frame range from 40 to 120 and the option pre-hold solves our problem because it holds frame 40 for the initial frames. Let's also uncheck the interpolate between input frames checkbox. If we move the playhead to the initial frames, we don't get the error anymore. Now, how to convert our simulation points into a geometry surface? A common method is to use BDB tools. BDB stands for sparse volumetric data. With these tools, we convert our points into a BDB volume. Then we can reshape and smooth the volume to have a better look. And finally, we convert the VDB volume into polygons. Let's do it. Click on the output port of the time blend mode. Drag, press tab and type VDB from. We have three options. We need the first one, VDB from particle fluid. Press enter. We have a low res volume representation in the viewport. So, the main parameter to adjust is the particle separation. If you remember, the value we used in our simulation was 0.025. Enter this value. Now we get a better representation. To improve the look of the volume, let's use a smooth node. Click on the output port of the VDB from particle fluid node. Drag. Press tab, type BDB Smooth SDF and press Enter. In this node, we have two parameters to play with. If we change the operation to Gaussian, we have extreme smoothing, but we lose shape. Change the operation to Mean Curvature Flow. With this option, we get better results in this case. The second important parameter is the number of smooth iterations. Increase to 10 to see the result. The surface is smoother, but we lose shape. To avoid this, it's common practice to dilate the volume by using a VDB reshape node. Press tab, type VDB reshape. Press enter twice. Drag the node before our smooth node. And the default parameters work OK because they are set to dilate the volume. With the offset slider, you can adjust the amount. Finally, we need to convert this volume into polygons using a VDB convert node. Click on the output port of the reshape node. Drag, press tab, type convert VDB and press enter. Change the convert to parameter to polygons. To see the polygons, change the display mode to a smooth wire shaded. If you want to reduce the number of polygons, you can use the adaptivity parameter. Let's return the display mode to a smooth shaded. Okay, that's one way to get your mesh. With this method, you can add more VDB tools to further adjust and polish the volume to get the best possible mesh. In this project, to get our mesh, we are going to use the Particle Fluid Surface node. This node provides all the functionality to convert the particles to a volume, reshape, smooth the volume and output the result as polygons. Click on the output port of the Time Blend node. Drag. Press Tab. Type Particle Fluid Surface. And press Enter. The result is not good. We need to adjust the parameters. And the main parameter is Particle Separation. But this value should match the Particle Separation in the Flip object of our simulation. Let's link these values. Go to the object level and before entering our simulation, go to frame 1, 
to avoid the simulation to start again. Dive in the dynamic context, select the flip object and right click on the particle separation parameter and select copy parameter. Let's return to our splash mesh node. Return to frame 120. In the particle fluid surface node, right click on the particle separation parameter and select paste relative references. We get a better result for the mesh. In the output section, change convert to to surface polygons. You can play with the adaptivity parameter to reduce the number of polygons. For this project, let's set it at zero to get no polygon reduction. Now go to the filtering tab. Here we can reshape and smooth our mesh. Enable the first checkbox, dilate. You can see in the parameters that the row checkbox is also enabled. This is because both parameters are linked. To gain more control, let's break these links. Right click on the road checkbox and select delete channels. And right click on the road parameter and also select delete channels. Disable the road process and check the viewport. Now enable the smooth checkbox. Change the smooth option to Gaussian. You can see we get a massive smooth, but we lose shape. Change it back to mean curvature flow. And you can change the iteration number to increase the smooth effect. Set it up at 24. If we enable the road option, in this case, this option doesn't help us, so we better keep it disabled. Take an artistic and visual approach rather than a technical one when using the filtering options like dilate, smooth and erode. Play with the parameters and options until you get the desired result. The mesh is ok, but the resolution is low and it has a hole, so we need to increase the resolution to help with these problems. Unfortunately, even increasing the resolution, the whole problem won't be completely solved. To fill holes in the mesh, a common way, although expensive in terms of rendering time and this space, is to create new additional particles using the receding option in the flip solver. Ok, let's go to the dynamic context to set the final parameters to get a high resolution simulation. Go to the object level and go back to frame 1. Dive into the simulation node. To adjust the resolution, go to the flip object and reduce the particle separation to 0.015. Now, to create more particles, go to the flip solver then to the Particle Motion tab and then to the Receding tab. Here we have two main parameters to play with. Surface Oversampling and Oversampling Bandwidth. I'm going to increase the Surface Oversampling 10 times to 15 and the Oversampling Bandwidth to 1.5. Remember, these values will increase the simulation time and disk space, so increase them just the necessary to get rid of the mesh holes. I think we are ready to run our final simulation. Let's go back to our splash mesh node. Select the .io node and check the load from disk option to avoid the loading error. Press the save to disk button to start the simulation, or if you want to keep the first cache data, change the name of the node to write on a new folder. Let's change it to V02. Ok, press the save to disk button and wait for the process to finish. 
The simulation process has finished. It took about one and a half hours and took up 141 gigabytes on disk. Let's enable the load from disk option to load the calculated data. And of course, we have an error on frame one. Go to the last frame. And here you are, the high resolution fluid particles. Middle click on the node. Here you can see we have 34.4 million points. Okay, let's check the mesh. Change the display flag to the particle fluid surface node. Houdini is calculating to render the mesh for frame 120. The mesh looks okay, but if needed, you could still play with the filtering options to refine the mesh. Because Houdini takes some time to calculate the mesh for each frame, it's better if we write the mesh to disk. To do this, just add a file cache node. We can even use the previous one we created. Press Alt and drag the existing file cache node to get a copy and connect it to the particle fluid surface. And rename it as mesh v02. Right click on the start and ink parameter and select delete channels. Now change the frame range to 40 to 120 and press the save to disk button to write the mesh to disk. Wait for the process to finish. The writing process has finished. It took about 32 minutes and took up 5.7 gigabytes on disk. Let's enable the load from disk checkbox. Finally, add a null node at the end and rename it as out. Let's make a flipbook with new settings. Change the frame range to 40 to 120 and press the start button. Ok, the flipbook just took one minute and it's ready, let's play it. We don't have holes in the mesh and we also don't have flickering in the mesh, so we can say the mesh is ready for the render process. In the next video, we will add a camera and lights to the scene. Thank you for watching this video, I'll see you soon in the next one.